Well, hello there, YouTube. Welcome to Monday's edition of The Breakfast Club. I'm Got That Funk. Thanks for joining me. Please don't take this personally, but there's one thing I really want to say. Fuck. Now, without any context and without any apparent intention behind my use of that word, I sincerely doubt that very many people out there watching this video were offended by my use of that supposedly profane and obscene word. We're conditioned from a very young age to think of that word as a dirty word. It's profanity. It's obscene. You're not supposed to say it. And yet I'd be willing to bet that almost everybody watching this video has used that word plenty of times in their life and has heard that word ten times more than they've used it. And I'd be willing to make an educated guess that the vast majority of times you've heard or used that word, offense was never a part of the equation at all because the word has numerous connotations to it. It can be invoking anything from enthusiasm to disgust and a wide variety of different reactions uh, in between. The word has numerous connotations and even if someone is using it in a way which is intended to be nasty, um, if it's not directed at you, are you offended when you hear that word? For example, if you're in sort of polite company with a bunch of strangers that you're trying to impress and somebody thoughtlessly comes in and says, fuck, you might be more aggrieved by hearing that word because you think the context was inappropriate for it. Having said that, if you were in a room with your best friends playing a game of cards and someone said the word, I sincerely doubt where anybody would even raise an eyebrow over hearing the word, regardless of what nasty intention might be behind it. So it's not as straightforward as this is a bad word, you shouldn't say it. You know, um, context and intent are everything. And it's not just profanity that that applies to, it applies to virtually everything that we say. When it comes to issues revolving around hate speech and free speech, which Sketchy White Dude and Josh in particular have brought up over the weekend on their videos on The Breakfast Club, um, I, I tend to agree with Sketchy White Dude uh, that we ought to include free speech protection um, around hate speech, precisely for the exact reason Sketchy said, because hate speech is awfully, awfully hard to define. Having said that, I also do, um, if I'm honest with myself, see the other side of the argument as well. Because by permitting hate speech, you make an allowance to have an atmosphere created where bigotry can be more than just an opinion. It can be something that people act on. And uh, it, if you create an atmosphere where uh, bigotry in particular is seen as morally acceptable or, or um, justified, some people will find themselves imperiled within that atmosphere. That's just a fact. I don't like that fact, but it is a fact. And we've seen that recently. For example, a couple of weeks ago, some jackass shot up Planned Parenthood in part of California. And when he went to court last week, he said he did it because he was a warrior for the babies. Now, I'm pretty sure that he didn't come up with that narrative all by himself. There's been politicians, particularly in the Republican Party, vying for the presidency, as well as pundits on Fox News and other news channels who have for years been basically saying that Planned Parenthood is the next best thing to the devil, it's evil, etc., etc. And there have been times when certain politicians have said things which, in my opinion, borderline on incitement. They're not incitement from an actionable legal standpoint, but it's damn close. So we have to be careful. We have to recognize that whilst I absolutely agree that free speech needs to be protected and needs to be as broad as possible, we do have to acknowledge that extreme bigotry can take on a life of its own. I mean, another recent example that we've all seen and I'm sure been disgusted by is Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump announced in front of a crowd of thousands of people that we should ban all Muslims from coming into the United States and got applause for it. 
And I'm pretty sure that if I was a Muslim living in the USA right now, I would be getting very twitchy about the atmosphere that is being created by not just Donald Trump's use of his free speech, but people arguing in support of Donald Trump and so on. It creates an atmosphere and people are potentially imperiled by this type of bigotry being widespread. So whilst I absolutely agree that the inconveniences and risks associated with too much free speech are worth the price because the inconveniences and risks of censorship and limiting free speech are too great to pay, we do have to acknowledge that using free speech, and as with every right, no right is unlimited, all rights come with an implicit responsibility to the society. If you want the right to speak your mind, you have to be prepared to extend that right to everybody else, and you have to be mindful that your speech can have consequences and that you might ultimately be responsible, if not legally, morally, for some of the consequences of how you exercise your rights. That's my opinion and I look forward to whatever you've got to say about it in the comment section down below. JJ Talks will be up next for tomorrow's edition of The Breakfast Club. I have no idea what topic she's going to be bringing up, whether she'll continue this conversation or start one of her own. And may the funk be with you always.